I was talking with a sophomore back in, uh, back in 1998. The world was already gearing up for the Sydney Games. We heard people talking increasingly on the news about expectations for the Olympic Games. How many medals would the U.S. win? How many would Australia win? And uh, I asked her one day uh, across my desk, so, so how do you think those expectations are made? Do people just vote with their hearts, or are they are they picking medalists in their head? You know, Michael Phelps will win this. Okay, not 2,000, but now is Michael Phelps going to win this many medals? And we realized, well, there's actually an interesting research question here. Could we somehow quantify those expectations? Could we could we scientifically? create those expectations. So we started building a model. You know, what sort of things would matter? Rich countries probably win more medals. Populous countries probably win more medals. Cold nations, communist nations. So we put together a, a mini model um, and thought we'd, we'd try, our, try our hand at it. We only had five variables or five factors in that original model and, and we surprised ourselves with the, with the accuracy for the 2000 Sydney Games. The design is complete, but will it work? that the results were 96% on target with what actually occurred at the games. I mean, that just, that's unheard of. Why, why would a model ever be that accurate? Um, so we tested it, we sent it out to other academics to review, and it turned out it really was that accurate. So we just continued rolling with those same five variables. It's only really in the last two games, Beijing in 08 and Vancouver in 2010, where it started to slip a little bit in terms of predictive accuracy. So, so we actually recalibrated the model just this spring, uh, January and February. We spent a, a major amount of effort overhauling the model. We've actually stripped it down to just population, income per capita, are you hosting the games, are you a neighbor to the host, and then finally a, a cultural specific factor. How does your cultural identity uh, revolve around sport or revolve around Olympic meddling sports? So the, the model says that the U.S. should, for all intents and purposes, win 99 medals in 2012. That's only one more than we predicted in 2008. And now having said that, the U.S. actually won 110 medals in Beijing. So maybe we're going to be a little bit low on the U.S. That's, that's entirely possible. We also underpredicted China in 2008. Now they were hosting the games and there was a lot of effort. We know there was a lot of documented effort uh, by the Chinese to win a lot of medals. So they actually won 100 and we only predicted 79. This year we're actually predicting even fewer because they're no longer hosting. So there's a legacy effect to be sure. Uh, you know, those Olympic athletes may be returning four years later if they're, if they're still, you know, top of their form. Or they may have turned themselves into mentors, coaches, you know, sponsors for, for teammates that are coming up through the ranks. Uh, so we're predicting only 67 medals for them in, in 2012. Uh, but, but all of these data are actually available on my website. It's all, it's all freely accessible. It's, it's science, publicly funded science.